Today, Matt Emerson, I have six cool, very niche or niche target farming ideas to share with everyone. On the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 161. And as always, you can find our show notes over at WBNLpodcasts.com. Jen O'Brien, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, you know, we're trying to help people figure out where can they go find business, particularly listings. We've, we've had a few episodes ago, we talked about five ways that you could go use right now to get some more listings. Today, I'm going to talk about even deeper into some niche farming ideas. I don't think you should do all of these. I'm hoping that one or two of them are interesting to you. I'm going to share a cool story around one of them that actually I did the homework on and I'm going to implement for my Sweet. new area in Florida. Okay? So uh, That's awesome. And hopefully afterwards, maybe you can give us a little recap of the Amelia Island uh, weekend. I'm looking forward to hearing more about oh, that. Oh, that's very exciting. Yeah, I got uh, exploring exploring Florida, getting motivated, very happy about my decision to relocate to Florida, and uh, I got to go see something I have never seen in all the years I lived in Georgia. I never went to this part of Florida. It was awesome. Well, that's cool. So let's just jump on in. All right, let's do it. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, here we are. It is episode 161 already. Hello of the WBNL podcast. All the show notes are the things I'm going to cover. You can get it over there at 161. Just go to WBNLpodcast.com. It'll be the most recent post if you're seeing this uh, real time. If not, look for 161 and you'll get all the great information. So I do have some notes that I'm going to share because we do like to uh, also put this up on our YouTube page. And why is it not going to that? Add to stream. That's why. I'm, what? Yeah. Hello. Okay. Being a little bit weird. I was getting a little busy. It's being a little bit freaky on our end here for you avid listeners of the WBNL podcast. All right. So six niche farming ideas. And the very first one is hopefully you have already done this if you're you know, a real estate veteran. But if you're listening and you're new to the business, you always got to start with what did you do before you got into real estate, your previous career? Do you have a list of contacts? Um, do you have people that you can start with there to add to your CRM as your sphere of influence, people who know you? And even better yet, is it is it like a group? If you were a teacher or a nurse or you're in an industry, there's endless connections that you can have with folks through groups. So go look at Facebook and LinkedIn and see if there's groups around your previous industry. Uh, all right, so that's a real no brainer. I think everybody does that when they first get into the business. But maybe it's maybe if you never did that and you've now in the business a while, go back and revisit that and see if that's something that you could make a connection with. This is all about building rapport with people and making a connection with them, right? But almost right. don't you think, Jan, in some ways that that does seem like the most logical, but so many people don't even do that. Well, and why I think why I want to say to you, if you never did do that, I know why you didn't, because you were new to the business and uh -huh. in your previous industry. We we're like, I'm not working with you. You're too new. Well, now you're not. Right. So maybe you go back and reconnect with those folks and find a cool program or something that you can do and, and you know, follow up with them, not just a one off. You know, the whole idea around farming is we're not talking geographical farming today. We're talking about specialties in target markets and, and niches, niches, niches. I don't know. I'm coming up with a new way to say that word. Uh, it's kind of like database database. I it's exactly really like that changed. because they're both fine. They're both acceptable. But I, I actually use both. So I, I, I'm a niche person, but I have heard some things recently where for some reason people were, I was listening to another podcast I like, I think, and I heard them say niche. I mean, niche. <laughs> niche, niche. Niche. Okay, we're going down the rabbit. We're going down the rabbit hole here. But I'll tell you one thing that you and I are both not. We're not spear of influence people. We're not spear of influence, and we're not realtors. <laughs> Realita, realite, real reality, realty. Okay, right, exactly. We digress. Let's go into this next fun one. Surname from this is one I actually played with today because I'm in I'm in the 
Pinellas County in Florida, which is a particular city is Wesley Chapel. It's north of Tampa. So I went into Realist. Okay, Realist, everyone that is a, a, a National Association of Realtor, Realtor, you probably have Realist. It's a, you know, and you have Remind. Those are two data sources that you can use. So this idea of a surname farm is go get a list of everybody who owns property in the area you serve. And again, I just did it through Realist. And this is what's so exciting. I just put the right spelling of my name is O'Brien. But there's O-B-R-I-E-N is my name. There's A-N. There's a Y-A-N. There's huh. all these ways that O'Brien is spelled. I just put my spelling in, which is the correct spelling. And uh, <laughs> of course. And I looked just in Pinellas and Pasco County, the two counties that are here near me. There were 405 homeowners. Wow. 405 homeowners. So this is the idea. All these different people. If I eliminate uh, some land and some things that maybe I wouldn't want to work with, uh, let's just call it 350 people that I could now have an instant farm and an instant connection with. And this is the idea. Oh. You send an intro letter saying, hi, I'm Jan O'Brien. I am your name. And, uh, you know, when time comes to buy or sell property, don't, don't you want to work with another O'Brien? Let's keep it in the family. Have some fun with it, right? So you're making a connection, leveraging your last name, and there's an instant rapport. It's 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 like whenever you meet someone that has your last name, you have this whole like easy conversation, right? Does that ever happen to you, Matt? Yeah, the, well, I've never met another and never honestly, I've never met another Emerson. Really? Yep. We should go in and see how many Emersons there are in uh, your yep. area, and I'm sure there's plenty of them. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of Emersons out there. I just never actually ever met one. It's really it's. Well, it when is, I did this in Las Vegas, it was only like less than a hundred people. So I was very excited about this. Yeah. That actually surprises me. All right. So that's the surname farm. And even if you're like, you have some wildly unique name, if go see if there's even one or two or five or 10 people with that name, because I'm going to tell you, if you have a unique name and there's three other people in your county or city you serve or whatever that has that same name, you're going to make a connection with them because the name's so unique. It's like, I haven't met another Emerson. Wow. Okay. Maybe I'm going to talk about it. Now, the next thing they're going to do, of course, if you're just doing this blindly, you're making a connection, you're sending an email. Uh, I'll get into ideas around all of these on what can you do to gather their data and what do you do to stay in touch with them. But first you do an intro letter, right? And you're going to have mailing addresses, which you can do right in Realist. I was able to put, I was able to export it. I could put it into my CRM. I could mail, I could print out Avery Labels, Matt Emerson, right from the source that we have that is included with our MLS dues. That's and, cool. All right. So that's Surname Farm. The next you know, one. You could do a whole little thing within your, your intro letter, just doing a little, uh, like his history of the name O'Brien or I know, something. I know. I was thinking about the same thing because I remember you doing something like Code of Arms recently. Yeah. Right? And I thought I would, I thought maybe I'll get you to help me with this. Because oh, yeah. We need to make something in Canva. <laughs> right? Yeah. 100%. We're going to send something out that just is the O'Brien farm. And that's one of the ways. I don't have many connections here other than my sister and family and me and starting to meet people. But hello, I could have maybe 300 and something people that share my last name. I don't know if you noticed. You saw those coats of arms in that PowerPoint presentation. But one of those coats of arms was the O'Brien coats of arm. Did you notice that? I noticed that. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm going to use that. And I'm aware it's the lion, sitting down lion. It's cool. All right. So hometown farm. Now, this is a little bit different also. So uh, are you originally from somewhere else? Are you practicing real estate in wherever you are, but you originally were born and bred in another area of the country or uh, even another country? So the idea here is same thing. You need a data source to go in and what today, now what you're looking for is absentee owners. Okay. So proper owners, people who own homes that are, uh, have a mailing address of whatever your hometown is. Okay. So if I wanted to go back and maybe make a connection with, uh, well, my hometown technically is Boston, but then I grew up in the Atlanta area, but let's just say I was born and bred and, and raised in, in Boston. And I wanted to go look for anybody that is in Boston, has a mailing address in Boston, but owns property in the area I served. I will do the same thing. I'll find the information. And then I would send a letter, especially O'Brien's in Boston. What a good idea. Yeah, no I kidding. Idea. Bet I could find some O'Brien's in Boston that would make a double. I, you know what? No doubt. A double connection to say, I want to be your, your Florida real estate connection, right? And uh, talking a little bit about, uh, you know, connections that you have in that state. So I have, I have a great story about this because I have a previous client, Bonnie. So Bonnie, if you're listening, shout out to you. Um, I, I ought to call Bonnie and see if she's still doing this. So I, when she was coaching with me, she was a Las Vegas client. 
I shared this idea with her and she's from Minnesota and she uh, loves Minnesota and Minnesotans. So she did this exact thing. She went and got a list. Maybe it was like 160, 165 people that had, believe it or not, mailing addresses that were in the state of Minnesota, but owned property in Las Vegas. And she had this little farm. It was definitely less than 160, 150 people. And she sent that initial letter and then she would continue to send something at least quarterly and just give an update. But her first one was fun because her personality was cool. And it came through this whole thing about you, you, you're you going to trust a Minnesotan, right? You're there, I'm here. And it worked because she had three pieces of business from this small little farm after a couple mailings. So talking about what's happening in the market, that's making cool. the connection that I'm your Minnesota connection because I'm a Minnesotan that's been transplanted here and I love in Vegas and you know, I want to make this connection with you and I want to be your realtor when the time comes to buy or sell or invest. Boom, hometown farm. Think about it. Combine the name and the hometown farm. That would be even cool. Yeah, no kidding. Great idea. Um, okay, so what else? What else is there? Well, huh? now let's get into some unique things around property type specialty. Now, this is, you, you know, you cannot, you can't be all of these things. You got to choose your lane, right? You could, you, like, I could have the O'Brien farm and then maybe even cho choose a specialist. I'll give you an example of what, what I'm going to be working on. So the first thing is property type. Do you want to, do you want to specialize in condos? condos just be a condo person and learn everything about condos if you're in an area that has high rises or lofts or mid rises do you want to do that and again the idea here is you just don't go you know what i think i'm going to do resort and second homes i mean you could but i think you got to have some reason behind it maybe yeah. you are purchasing one or you want to be able to know how to do that or it's really in your your field or your passion i think it has to have something like that right uh, international is a designation that you, and all these have designations. A lot of these have designations. I mean, you could be like an avid golfer and you're all about living on golf course and you're in an area that has a lot of golf course communities and you become the expert in all the golf course communities. Right. I mean, this is hyper local expert stuff here. You know, I work in Wesley Chapel and I specialize in these kind of homes. OK, that's the idea. All right. Or I'm working downtown Tampa. I'm all about the, the, the certain corridor, the condos and the high rises that are down there. So that's property type specialty because you have something that you have in common with it or you just really love it. The next little group, number five, is demographics. So demographics are people. So think of types of people. The list I have here to get you thinking is investors. Now, if you're going to work with investors, you've got to like, once you choose one of these things, you've got to go do your homework and you've got to go learn everything there is about working with investors and the language they use and the information that they want to have about you know, cap rates and return on investment and that you need to be able to crunch numbers and do all that with them. Seniors, 55 plus active community, whatever you want. To, that's a beautiful one here. This this one in the military veterans are the ones I'm looking at. Combination of um, looking for people who, you know, I'm, I'm going to go get my car registered finally. I, had to have, I was waiting on title to come in and so forth. Um, I'm going to get veterans tags. Why? Because I want to be able to make a connection with people. There's tons yeah. of veterans here. There's tons of. So that's veterans. what you landed on. I know you were you were going back and forth and what your. Uh, I'm going to go with veterans. Do. I really want to get involved in the veteran community here and I, uh, on charitable reasons and and maybe even helping people transition into real estate. So I have ideas around this and. I know so, what that plate looks like. Florida is the strangest uh, uh, state. It's got uh, like 150 different types of different options for a place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, it was either going to be veterans or I like trees. I love trees, which I do. And yep. I thought that was unique. It's a nonprofit for trees, planting trees out here. And it's awesome. So, you know, uh, first time home buyers, even millennials, whatever the demographic is, trust me, there is some training out there on it. There's target uh, strategies and stuff to be able to do. They're all kind of similar and it can start right around the training. Okay. The last little area is other specialties that I wanted to talk about. And this is getting down into serious little specialties like probate or divorce or short sales or becoming a uh, wanting to work with banks and so forth. And some people may be thinking about this because there's definitely a lot of chatter about eventually we're going to have more short sales and REOs and it's less than 1% in the count and of all sales in the country right now, but it's definitely going to tick up. And if you're going to get into that, it's a niche and you have got to learn it. You got to go study it yeah. You're gonna have to go take some training on these things. Uh, and that's, that's the next thing that I would say is a lot of these lend themselves in the specialty areas anyway, just go Google divorce, you know, real estate divorce specialist, you know, for age for real estate, and you will find two or three certifications that are out there. 
Start with NAR, National Association of Realtors. They have some unique ones. They have a senior designation. They have an international property, a second home resort specialist. Those come with the cloud of NAR. But then you have people who set up everything. Like you can get a home staging certification, as an example. Um, that's not a niche. That is more of a marketing strategy to use when you're listing properties. But you can find divorce, probate. There's a couple big companies in the country that do all about probate. And in the course, you pay for it. Here's the benefit. You're learning the strategies and techniques of what you have to know to be a probate specialist or a divorce specialist. And then they start talking to you about marketing ideas. And I'll tell you, on those two, one of the biggest strategies is you have to make connections with attorneys who specialize right. in those areas. Of course. And it's a whole different approach to how you handle it. It's a, it takes a certain person to be able to deal with the probate stuff because you're dealing with people that are going through very emotional milestone times of their life, divorce and death, right? For sure. So uh, those are some of the things that you can do. Now, where do you get all this data? Well, if you're in an escrow title state, you can get with your escrow company and they'll probably be very happy to help you gather this data. Um, if you're not in a state that provides that, you have it, even if you are in a state that provides that, you have access through your local MLS to probably Realist and Remind or one of the either, one of <laughs> either one of those. <laughs> And this is all about data, right? This is all stuff at your fingertips. Go take a class on it. I did. It, I was like, wow, look at all this stuff. I mean, that's how I was able to go in and get owner name. And I could do things like owner occupied, non-owner occupied, uh, types of property, price points, whatever, to be able to pull up my own data and do labels, right? Then you can get paid services. Now, what's the paid services are going to help is um, help you with uh, getting other contact information. So when you go into a uh, tax record base like Realist and where other data is coming in, you, pay, you basically just have people's addresses. So how do you get their other information? Well, you could pay for that service like Ivy Data. I've used both Ivy Data and Coal Information. So get IvyData.com, ColeInformation.com. This is like a subscription thing. Ivy will allow you to uh, pay per lead, if you will. You put information in, and it only you only have to pay so much if they if the system returns any emails or phone numbers right and sometimes they're right sometimes they're not they're i mean most of the time they're they're right but a lot of times they're old information right but you but you can start digging into all that and find data sources for that um but then you can also just do things like if you had a, a group of people in my o'brien list for example and i broke that down just to single family people that are in the county i'm in right now and maybe that's a couple hundred people or 100 people I could dig into that. I could start cross-referencing people. I could look for them on social media. You know, I could use some of this other data source. You could put a list in to those things you pay for, and it will return information to see if you can find any other information. So now, besides a mailer, I can call, right? I can call them. Uh, I can text them. I can try to make a connection with them, right? So the one thing, if you're going to mail to these groups of, of people that we've just talked about, Make sure inside of that connection, initial introduction letter, you have some URL or you have a website address to drive people back. So an example would be, particularly because these are people who own homes, uh, it would be like, why don't you find out, you know, go, go to, you know, PascoCountyHomeValues.com um, to get a free market update on what's happening in your neighborhood and it will come to you every month. That's a call to action, that it's a free report, they come to your landing page, they sign up through your whatever system you have, and then you capture their email, right? So now you can now follow up with them. You can put them into what your newsletter that you do monthly. About to work on the newsletter for Florida, my first one for Florida this month. Sweet. And uh, the Las Vegas team where I'm going to record a video. And that would be something that I would put in my introductory letter saying, why would you want to connect with me? Besides, we have this something in common, a name, a hometown or whatever. Um, I provide this level of value. Here's my YouTube channel. Here's this. Go learn about me. And then start building that credibility sight unseen. They will go check it out if they're interested. Maybe they're interested just because your name is the same. It's crazy how things are, Matt, right? Yeah. I would do it. If I got somebody that sent me that was an O'Brien, I would be interested in learning. Sure. About you would at least you at least connect with them, you know, them in some way. Absolutely. I would go Google them. And that's why you have to have some, you know, and I think we're going to talk about that. You know, there's so many uh, resources right now. I mean, there, you know, the whole world has gone very, has gotten very clicky, you know? So there's so many different groups and stuff like that as well. I mean, you know, whether it be beer lovers or golfers yeah. or, you know, whatever. I mean, there's Disney people. There's so many different things. And I'm going to say something else. If Clubhouse is becoming 
becoming more and more popular. If you are on Clubhouse, I, I, do you have a Clubhouse bio? Have you gone on there and done all that? I do, and I haven't. I've, I swear to goodness, I was just looking at all that again, and I, I am like, where is the time suck? You, you know, everything takes time, but right. It, but make sure that you put in your bio that you are a realtor, because you know that's not what you want to. You bring, you can't bring that up in the in the conversation necessarily, unless you sneak. Have it you in. done it, Matt? Have you created? Are, a oh, I've been on a lot of them. I really enjoy it. Because you know the great thing about them, they're they're improv and they pop up. I get the notifications. I jump in. I listen for a little bit. If it's something I'm not interested in, I just pop out. You know what I mean? But um, I I really I've been I can enjoying multitask it. with that, right? It's so it's sort of like if you're doing things that are yep. work related that you don't have to, you know, that you could kind of have it in that background. That's what our partner Cosmos says that he sometimes is listening and you go into the areas in Clubhouse that you're interested in. Yeah, you know, uh, and maybe learn something. But then you can potentially. But once again, everything is a commitment. And so I have been putting it off, but I have, I've done it a couple of times, but recently when I was driving, which brings us to this last little bit, um, when I, I drove about three and a half, three, 40, uh, three hours, 40 minutes to go from Wesley Chapel, Florida up to Amelia Island. And I have a childhood friend who has just, she's been retired for a little bit, love that she has, who is relocating to Amelia Island. That's where they want to retire. So they already sold their home in, um, in Decatur, Georgia, it's closing next week. And so I happened to be going up and they said, why don't you come up and we're going to be on a house hunt. Can you go look with us? And it was great because I got to learn a little bit about what's happening in that part, just north of Jacksonville. I'd already heard about this place. It, it was beautiful. It was, you know, just a chain of islands that as I was going, going, driving up and getting off the main drag to go north of Jacksonville, that last 20, 30 miles was beautiful because it was low country. So you, you, the, the, the word they use there remind me of J the low country in Georgia and the North Carolina barrier islands. They call it the low country. It's real old South, you know, with uh, marshes and different than here. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. The beach was gorgeous off of Amelia Island and a couple of the other beaches that are up in that way. But uh, then I think, and by the way, my friends did find a house and oh, they are, I think they've negotiated the deal and, and we went and looked at about four or five houses and then we all love this one particular house that was, built on a historical it was a plantation it used to be a plantation it's along a river and it's got beautiful magnolia trees it's oh, it, wow. reminded of, it reminded me of savannah georgia and those areas because it is literally just cumberland island georgia it's just over the border in the northern the north uh, east part of florida uh it's it just beautiful country up there and uh enjoyed it so much got to learn a little bit about the real estate up there. I met a realtor who's been in the business 22 years up there who's helping my friends and um, man, it was a good, a good trip, but I was, I got to, I got to back, get back to listening to podcasts and started to do clubhouse, but I was really, I had been remiss in not listening to all these podcasts that I like to listen to, but I had about seven hours to catch up on things and get excited about that. And clubhouse would be one of those things that I would, that I would probably do if I was in the car, if I was walking more. Right. It is interesting, though, if you're sitting at your desktop, kind of like what Cosmo was saying, if you're just kind of listening to the background, I, I find it really, it's fun to go in and actually look at everyone's profile that's in the room just to see what's going on. And just like everything else, Jana Brian, 90% of the people don't have a profile. So, you know, it's just their name. So it's another one of those times where it's an opportunity to, you know, put your, put your goal, your mission out there, you know, so, because I'm sure other people do let's that talk, too. Well, maybe we should, let's, let's make clubhouse be a bit of a let's have that as a conversation we'll have in the upcoming episode and, and come back let's do that matt we'll come back uh next week or the week after and discuss um how do you use clubhouse what can you learn from it you know is there is there yeah and if, and if it's something you want to start a group i mean you know it's it's interesting i haven't done that yet but and i haven't actually spoke on one of them but you can easily raise your hand and ask to speak during them it's, it's interesting so i i liken it to then the, a cool new feature where it's all audio. So it's like interactive podcasting. So you start a club and it could yeah. be your weekly show and you invite people and you have, you start a conversation and then you can bring people into the, onto the stage with you and, and chat and have a conversation. Most people are listening. Like, like most people are just listening, like they lurk on social media, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly what it is. But if you're the kind of person who has that personality, you know, maybe it is. So, Let's do that, Matt. We'll come back and talk about what uh, what are some of our favorite clubs, what have we discovered, and you know, where are some real estate stuff that we could point people to. Right. 
And I do have some clubhouse invitations to share. I don't know when they'll open that up, but I seem to have about five or six. I bet you do too. So if you're listening and you need a clubhouse invite, we can help you out. We hook you up. Yeah, absolutely. All right. That's all I have this week, Mr. Emerson. Well, that's awesome. I guess that's a wrap then for episode 161 of the Wander Been Out Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet all of our show notes as always over at, where's my little, where's my banner? How come my banner's not coming up? Oh, no, we're having there a- it is, 161wbnlpodcast.com. Uh, we do uh, tips every week in our Facebook group. So if you're not a member of our Facebook group, go over to Facebook and type in WBNL Wanderers Club. And we um, try to, we're, we're not always exactly on this schedule, but we do coach tips on Monday, t- tips on Tuesday, and tips on Wednesday. What was that? Sometimes we're traveling, but we'll catch up. Sometimes we're traveling. Sometimes we got some other things going on. Got a lot going on, as a matter of fact. So um, it's all good. So any any other parting last words there, Dan O'Brien? No, just go find your niche and work it. That's right. Go find your niche. Just go do something. Just go do something. <laughs> there is business to be had. Don't be in a funk about, oh, there's no inventory. Then go get some inventory for yourself. That's right. That's what I want to leave you with. In between what we talked about today, what we talked about a couple weeks ago, there's something in there there's a nugget in there that's going to help you go get some listings so go get listings that's what it's all about right now it's going to get better it is going to get better hang in there but you got to take charge that's right and that way you can go out and live the life you've dreamed right True that. So get up get out like jan o'brien's been doing i'm living vicariously through jan o'brien's wandering it's very exciting uh mask up and be forever wandering but not lost goodbye y'all